Basic drop down menus like this are boring and turn users away from your site. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create an advanced drop down menu, which is going to engage and bring in customers. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create these drop down menus that have this nice smooth animation, contain additional information inside of it, as well as things like forms if you want. You can really put anything you want into these drop down menus, unlike normal drop down menus that just contain links, which are kind of boring. And to get started, I just have this header section that you can see over here on the left. We just have a header and it has three links inside of it. One of them is just a normal A tag. It doesn't do anything when we click on it, it's just a normal link. And then these other ones are just buttons that are going to open up our drop down menus. And then I have a basic style sheet which just contains the styles for the header and the link just so I don't have to type out this boilerplate code for you. Now to get started with this video, what I want to do is I want to create essentially a dummy dropdown that we can use to do our animations and all of the code for actually rendering out the dropdown. And then from there we're going to start to put the content in the dropdown so I can show you how that would work. So in order to create these dropdowns, the easiest thing we can do is wrap this button inside of a div which we're just going to give the class of dropdown. So if I just make sure I spell this correctly, we can put dropdown here. Now we have that div and we're going to put our button inside of that div. Then inside of that div, we're going to create essentially our drop down menu. So this is going to be another div, which we're going to give the class of drop down menu. And this drop down menu is where our drop down content is going to live. For now, we're just going to put the text drop down content in there so we can see how our styles are going to work. So we can just save that and move over to our styles.css. So we essentially created a dropdown and this dropdown is going to be the thing that wraps everything. And the main thing I wanna set on this is a position of relative. That way we can absolutely position our dropdown menu inside of it like we have here. So I wanna take our dropdown menu and for the dropdown menu, I just wanna take the position and I wanna set it to absolute because we wanna absolutely position this inside of this dropdown container, which contains our link. Now, for now, we just go over to here and save our page. We can kind of see we have this dropdown content, which is showing up below our information. So far, this is working mostly how we want it to, but I wanna specifically position this in the exact location I want it to be. So I want the left to always be zero, so it lines itself up on the left. That's not really gonna change anything. But the top here, I want to be 100%, but I also want to add some padding essentially between this drop down content and the link up here. Because if we just do 100%, you can see it doesn't change position because it's butted right up to the link. So instead, we're going to use calc here. We're going to take 100% and we're just going to add 0.25 REM onto that. And it's just going to give us a little bit of spacing below the link. If we make this larger, for example, we change it to 0.5 REM, you can see we get even more spacing. In our case, 0.25 I think looks pretty good. Now the next thing I want to do is just get basic styling to kind of give it that white background and shadow. So we can come in here, we can say the background color. This is going to be white, and that way we get that white background color. We can also come in and we can give it a little bit of padding. We'll say 0.75 REM just to give a bunch of space around it. And we're also going to say that the border radius is going to have a little bit of rounding. We'll say 0.25 REM. And finally, the most important thing is going to be the box shadow we apply to this. So we'll just come in here with a box shadow. We'll say zero and two pixels. So it's gonna have a little bit more shadow on the bottom portion. Then we're going to have five pixels here and zero. And then we're just gonna say RGBA to give us a transparent color. Zero, zero, zero is gonna be black. And we're gonna say 10% opacity. So now you can see we get this nice shadow and you can see it's a little bit heavier on the bottom. And it's because we set the Y to two pixels right here. Now, if we wanted a larger shadow, we could change this value here, and that's going to give us more shadow or less shadow. We could also make it darker or lighter by changing this opacity here. As you can see, we get a darker shadow, or we're going to get a lighter shadow with a lighter value. Now, the next thing I want to work on is actually making this animate in, because right now it's just static on our screen. So by default, you would normally think, well, we'll just set the display to none, and then when we bring it in, we're going to change the display to block or something like that. But instead, we actually want to animate this in. As you can see, we have this nice animation here. And if you have a display none go to something like display block, you can't animate that. So instead, we need to use opacity that is going to allow us to animate this. So by default, we're going to set our opacity here to zero. So it's going to be completely invisible. And if we save, you can see now it is invisible. And if we come in here with a drop down menu and we give it a class like active, for example, then we could change the opacity here to one and that would make it visible. Now we're gonna to need to hook up some JavaScript to do that. So before we do that, let's just do a little bit of testing. What we can do is we can select our link and this link that is inside of a dropdown. So we'll say dropdown. We wanna get the link inside of it. And then we wanna get the dropdown menu that comes after that link. And we only wanna do this whenever the link is focused. And if you're unfamiliar with all of these different selectors that I'm using right here, I highly recommend checking out my full CSS selector cheat sheet linked down in the description below. But essentially all this is doing is saying, get the thing with a dropdown class we want to get the direct child that is a link. 
whenever we focus on that link, so whenever we click it, we want to select the drop down menu that is a sibling with it. Once we do that, I'm going to change the opacity of our drop down menu, opacity here to 1. So now, if we click this, you can see it opens that menu up, and when we click away, it's going to close. But it doesn't matter how many times I click this, it always stays open. That's just the limit of using focus here. We're going to change this out for JavaScript in a little bit, but I like having this here so that we can test how this is going to work before we implement the JavaScript. You will notice, though, there is no animation. It just appears immediately. So what we want to do is set up a transition. We can just say transition here, and we can set a delay. For example, we want to have a transition that lasts 150 milliseconds, and we want to do it on the opacity property. So we only want to animate opacity, and we'll say ease in out. Now when I click on this, you can see it animates itself in over 150 milliseconds and then disappears over 150 milliseconds. You will notice that over here, we kind of drop the thing in place as opposed to just having it appear statically. So to do that, we can just set up a simple translate. So we can say transform, and we want to do a translate in the y direction. So we'll say translate y, and we're going to set up here negative 10 pixels. So by default, it's going to be essentially higher than it should be. And if we just make sure that we spell transform correctly, and we come down and we make sure that our translate y is set to zero in the active position, you'll notice that it starts out up high and then it's going to translate itself down. But you'll notice that doesn't actually happen. And that's because we're not animating this property. So what we need to do is just set up something else in our transition for transform. And we want this to be over 150 milliseconds with the same exact timing curve. Now you can see this drops in and slides up exactly as we want. Now one final thing that you'll notice if we change this opacity to like 0.5 for now by default is that this overlaps our link and we actually can't click our link through this which is a bit of a problem. So to get around this issue we can set the pointer events to none. Essentially that means don't allow any interaction at all with the mouse and then down here we can change pointer events to auto when it's visible. So when it's invisible our mouse doesn't interact with it. It pretends it doesn't even exist and then when it's visible it just acts like normal. So now I can actually click the link even though it's behind the drop down menu. So let's just change this opacity back to zero so we get the actual animation we're looking for. That just means that when this thing is not visible on the page, it's not actually going to be interactable. Now, one other thing I want to do is you'll notice that when we hover over these links, they turn black. But when I click on it and hover away, it no longer is black. I want to carry over that black coloring. So what I'm going to do over here where we have link hover, I'm just going to add in another style for our dropdown. And this is going to be for any link that is a direct child. When it is focused, I just want to apply this coloring. And again, we're going to take care of this inside of JavaScript to make it so it's not only on focus. But now when I click this link, you notice it doesn't quite work. That's because I want this to be the direct child, not a sibling. So now when I click on this, you'll notice that it keeps that black color, which is exactly what we want. So now I've done a bunch of talk about JavaScript. So let's actually implement the JavaScript to get this to work as we expect. Let's create a script.js. And up here, we're just going to make sure we linked to that script.js and make sure that we defer this until later. And if you're unfamiliar about this defer keyword, I have a full video on it linked in the cards in description for you. So now inside of here, I just want to set up an event listener. This is going to be a click event listener, and it's going to just be on the body or on the document. And that's because inside of here, I'm just going to check to see what we're clicking on. So I want to say, hey, is this a drop down button? So is it a drop down button? And that's going to be if the target here matches a CSS selector. And instead of using actual CSS classes for our JavaScript, I like to use data attributes instead. If you're curious why that is, I have a full blog article on it. I'll link down in the description below. But essentially, anytime we have a drop down button, I want to give it a data attribute, which is going to be data drop down button. And we want to make sure that we don't have those brackets around it because that's for the selector only. And then we can just copy that to both of our drop down buttons that we have. And then whenever we have an actual drop down, I just want to use the data drop down attribute like this. Now we can actually use those selectors in our JavaScript by just saying data drop down button. Now what we want to do essentially here is, hey, are we clicking on this button? If so, we want to toggle our dropdown. But if we're also clicking outside of our button, we want to close it. But if we're clicking inside of our dropdown, we want to keep it open. So the first check I want to do is say, hey, are we inside of a dropdown? If so, just ignore this completely. So if this thing is not a dropdown button and it is inside of a dropdown, so if it has a parent, we'll just say target.closest, this is going to give us the closest parent that matches a selector, which in our case is data drop down. So if this is inside of a drop down, then what we want to do is we just want to ignore this. So if this is not equal to null, then we're just going to return. This just says, hey, completely ignore this click 100%, just return out. And that's because if we're in a drop down, we don't want to do anything at all. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to say, hey, if we are clicking a drop down button, then what I want to do is I want to get the drop down we're clicking. So let's create a variable called current drop down. And this current drop down here 
is just going to be set to e.target.closest, and we want to just copy this from up here because we're just going to be getting the closest dropdown that we're inside of. So this is getting us the current dropdown, and then I want to take that current dropdown class list, and I want to toggle the active class. So essentially, this is going to hide or show this dropdown depending on if it's open or not. Then the very last thing I want to do is just say document.query selector all. I want to get rid of all the dropdowns that aren't already open. So essentially, I want to close all the other dropdowns that aren't this one. So we'll just say data dropdown dot active. So this is getting all of the open dropdowns. What I want to do is loop through each of them. So for each one of these dropdowns, I just want to close them. So we'll say if the dropdown is equal to the current dropdown, then return, do nothing at all. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to take our dropdown. So make sure we return here. Otherwise, we take our dropdown and we're getting the class list and we're going to remove that active class. So this bit of code closes all the dropdowns that are already open, except for the one that we just opened. If, for example, we opened a dropdown. So this code right here is going to be adding the active class. So in our styles, instead of using link focus, we can change this to dropdown.active. Same thing down here, dropdown.active, get rid of the focus on the link. And now when we click on this, you'll notice it opens up. I can click inside of it, it doesn't delete it. But if I click the button again, as you can see, it opens and closes it. And if I click outside, it's going to close that. So now what I want to do is go back into my index.html here, and I want to actually set up the real content inside of here. This content, we're going to give it a class of information grid, because it's going to be a grid of information, as you can see right here. And then what we want to do is we want to have essentially a bunch of divs. We want to have divs that are going to contain each section. So we have a free tutorial section, courses, blog, and other. So what we can do is we can create a div, and then we can create a drop down heading inside of that. And this is going to say free tutorials, because this is the first section. And then below that, we can have our drop down links. And these are just going to be a bunch of anchor tags. We'll say an anchor tag here that has a class of link, and the href is just going to be nothing. And we'll say all. Then we can say latest, and we can say popular. And that is going to be our three links for this free tutorials section. Let's just copy this down again, paste it in here, and we're going to have a section that is going to be for courses. So we'll just put my three courses in here. We'll say JavaScript. We're going to have a CSS course, and we're going to have my React course. Then we'll copy this down again because we still have a couple more sections to deal with. So copy that down and copy it down one more time for the last section. So this is going to be for our blog, and the blog is just going to say all. If I can spell properly, it's going to say latest, and it's going to say popular. And then finally, we have another section for all the links that just don't really make sense. So things like my Twitter are going to be in here, a link to my newsletter, for example, and then finally, a link to our Discord group. And if you're curious, all these different things I've listed out here are actually things that I do have and maintain. They'll all be linked down in the description for you. But if we save that and we come over to our actual application, you can see we have all that information. And we want to make sure all of this is inside of our drop down menu. So if we minimize this, you'll see it's not actually all in there. So I just have some divs in the incorrect correct locations. Now, as you can see, they're all in the right place. So when I open this up, we have everything inside of there. But obviously, it needs to be styled. So let's style out that information grid. This information grid is just a two by two grid, as you can see here. So we can say display is going to be grid. Our grid template columns is going to repeat two times, and we're going to have max content. So it's just going to be as wide as it possibly can be. And we're going to have a gap of 2EM between each one of our things. And let's just make this 2REM. So now if we save, go over here, you can see everything is spaced out pretty well. The next thing we need to worry about is our drop down links. So we'll say drop down links. We're going to change this to a display of flex, and we want to change the flex direction to column. And then finally, we'll put a gap of 0.25 REM between them. And as you can see, we now have that nice spacing between all of our different pieces of content. Now, finally, you notice there's some weird things going on with our HTML up here. So I'm guessing I just have some divs in the wrong locations where they should be. So let's just make sure all of our divs are properly closed off as they should be. These all look to be correct. Let's just make sure we indent these. And it looks like we're missing one div that's supposed to close off our drop down here indent those, save, and now it looks like the spacing is proper, which is exactly what we want. We just had some weird div stuff going on. And now what we want to do is create a new drop down menu down here for this button. So we're going to create a drop down that's going to wrap this. And then we're going to put inside of here a drop down menu. So we'll say drop down menu. And inside this drop down menu, I'm going to have a form, which we're going to give a class of login form. And inside of here, we don't really care about the action. Inside of here, what we want to do is we essentially want to have a label, and this label is going to be for the email field. It's just going to say email, and then we're going to have an input of type email, 
and it's gonna have a name and an ID of email. Let's copy this down because we're gonna do the exact same thing for password. We'll essentially replace all instances of email with password and we'll make this one a capital P. And then finally, we're gonna have a button which is going to have the type here of submit. Let's make a submit button that says login. Now, if we come over, click on login, you'll notice it doesn't actually open the dropdown and that's because we need to add that data dropdown attribute onto our dropdown. That way the JavaScript knows what's going on and now when we click on it, you can see it opens up. I just wanna add a little bit of styling here to make that a little better. So inside, we can just say that we have our login form and I wanna get the inputs and all I wanna do is add some margin on the bottom of 0.5 REM just to space them out and as you can see, it looks a lot better. You can see we can swap between these different things, we can close them all, we can toggle them, and this is an advanced looking dropdown which is way cooler than those basic dropdowns. Now if you enjoyed this video, you're going to love my CSS selector cheat sheet. It's completely free, I mentioned it earlier in the video, and this is going to cover every selector you need to know in order to master CSS. So I highly recommend you check that out, link down in the description below. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.